the Georgia Department of Corrections has been well known for its corruption and violent record. 74% of Georgia inmates are labeled violent offenders. Between the years 2022 and 2023, there were a total of 68 homicides and over 80 suicides in Georgia prisons. Oh yeah, it's so weird. It's so weird. He wanna die. He wanna die. He really wanna die. He really wanna die. Really wanna die. Ain't nothing. He wanna die. In 2019, a total of 428 correctional officers were arrested for crimes, including sexual relations with inmates and smuggling drugs. Prison guards would accept bribes from inmates to help pay bills because the starting pay for a prison guard in Georgia is $42,000. Inmates would often pay guards amounts between $2,500 to $10,000 to smuggle in drugs, food, expensive clothes, and cell phones. There was one situation where an inmate serving a 15-year sentence for armed robbery got his hands on a cell phone and impersonated a well-known billionaire. He convinced the bank to wire him $11 million and use the money to buy a $4.4 million house in Atlanta. When he was caught with his cell phone, he had a total of $31 million in his bank account. In 2021, he completed his 15-year sentence but was immediately placed into federal custody and later sentenced to 11 years in federal prison. However, this will lead me to a specific story that began at the horrendous Smith State Prison, where murder and corruption are a daily routine. Yeah, she get real in the trenches like that. The Draco is under me. That bitch in my lap now. Come and get him. You think I ain't on point? Run up if you want. Shoot that bitch through the window. You hear me? <laughs> yeah, I just want that nigga for his phone and his knife. I do shit like that. Look at my rollie back there. Yeah, bitch. In the can with it. Yeah. Freely. Free me. In March of 2019, 24-year-old Nathan Weeks, who had been incarcerated since he was 16, was sentenced to 17 years in 2012 for a string of multiple armed robberies of pizza delivery drivers that he had been committing since he was 14. He would be transferred to Smith State Prison. Weeks eventually met and became close friends with fellow inmate Chris Sumlin, who was serving his second prison sentence after being released, but was caught with possession of a firearm and cocaine, resulting in a nine-year sentence. Weeks eventually started a romantic relationship with multiple female prison guards and recruited the prison warden and male prison guards to help kick off his million-dollar drug operation from his prison cell. Weeks started to flirt with Officer Jessica Gerling and eventually persuaded her to start bringing in drugs, phones, and designer clothing. He would have her coordinate drone drops to fly over the prison and drop methamphetamine from the drone. Officer Gerling would make over $3,000 for every time she smuggled in contraband, and with that money, she eventually bought a new Mercedes-Benz. In late June 2020, she showed up for a night shift at the prison and was caught with marijuana. As Gerling went through the scanners, something caught the screener's attention. She was strip-searched, but nothing was found. When officers searched her car, however, they found a condom stuffed with tobacco. Confronted with that evidence, she admitted she had another condom inside her underwear. It was found to contain a vacuum-sealed bag with 63 grams of marijuana. Gerling may have lost her job, but Weeks kept her on his payroll. She threatened her that if she stopped helping him and his inside organization, then he would kill her and her daughter. Gerling was scared and told Weeks that she wanted to quit, so he told her she could quit after she did one more drop for him. So Weeks hired prison guard Dennis Kraft, who Weeks would nickname Kraft as John Wick, a fictional Hollywood character known as a hitman. Weeks instructed Gerling to meet Kraft just before midnight on June 28, 2021, to give Kraft some drugs. When Kraft met up with Gerling outside her trailer park home, he shot her to death and drove off. Later that year, Chris Sumlin would be released from prison and was to serve 12 years on probation. Weeks would instruct and pay Sumlin $3,500 to take care of Jerry Lee Davis, who was a food delivery truck driver that delivered to the prison and would smuggle drugs in, but he quit smuggling drugs, which made Weeks furious. So Chris Sumlin broke into Davis's house while he was sleeping in bed next to his daughter and shot him to death. Over time, Weeks would pay the prison warden $30,000 to falsify documents and help coordinate the smuggling of jewelry and forbidden packages that were not allowed to be sent to the prison that contained drugs. Weeks then recruited two new prison guards, Officer Murphy and Officer Jones, who both lived with each other at the time. Jones would be Weeks' new girlfriend, taking the place of the deceased Officer Gerling. Another female guard would be fired for trying to sneak in $29,000 cash into the prison for Weeks. 
but there was a prison guard called Officer Rubin who refused to be bought and took her job seriously, wanting no contraband in the prison. So she was tough on prisoners caught with illegal items and would punish them. When Officer Rubin conducted multiple cell searches, she would disrupt Weeks's operation. So Weeks wanted the officer gone, and both female officers Murphy and Jones would help acquire the guard's home address. So Weeks paid Murphy, Jones, and Sumlin $5,000 to kill the guard. Officer Murphy borrowed a car from her uncle, picked up Officer Jones, and then picked up Chris Sumlin. They drove to the address they had obtained, and Sumlin got out of the truck wearing a mask and shot an 88-year-old man in his driveway. They quickly drove away. Unfortunately, the man Sumlin killed was Bobby Kicklighter, who happened to be the next-door neighbor of the intended target. The three suspects had killed the wrong man. As they sped off, Sumlin dropped his ski mask in the road, and detectives were able to collect DNA from the mask, connecting it to Chris Sumlin. Sumlin was arrested, and when detectives searched through his phone, they found text messages between the female guards communicating and planning out the murder. Both guards were arrested and the Georgia Bureau of Investigation launched an investigation into the corruption within the prison, resulting in the firing and arrest of Warden Brian Adams. Weeks was placed in solitary confinement and also charged with Bobby Kicklighter's death. Sumlin was indicted on multiple charges, including malice murder, felony murder, burglary in the first degree, aggravated assault, possession of a firearm by a convicted felon, possession of a firearm during the commission of a felony, and conspiracy to commit murder. Nathan Weeks, Ariel Murphy, and Keisha Jones were also indicted on similar charges. Sumlin was charged with a total of 10 felony counts. Weeks and Jones were charged with 9 felonies. Murphy was charged with 8 felonies. The indictment stated that the Enterprise smuggled in cell phones, narcotics, brand name and luxury clothing, jewelry, weapons, and tobacco. The Enterprise utilized Cash App, Venmo, Western Union, cryptocurrency, and U.S. currency to purchase contraband, bribe guards, and finance murder and other crimes of violence to protect other inmates for profit. While Weeks was supposed to be confined in solitary awaiting this trial, a lieutenant was caught moving $30,000 on Cash App for inmate Weeks and was fired. Weeks was paying the lieutenant $2,000 a week to move his money around on Cash App. The state of Georgia is currently seeking the death penalty for both Sumlin and Weeks, but the trial has been delayed because Weeks has failed to pay his attorney and claims he has no source of income. Both female prison guards remain in the county jail on a $750,000 bond and a $1.5 million property bond. They've been the air day for me right here, man. Right now. <laughs> yeah. What I've been having going on air day lately, man. <laughs> Took me a sale and tried it out. Nah, Real Allison Court Pibber, nigga, man. <laughs> Really a lot of bitch, free the guys.